Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. We're back once again with another amazing science tutorial video. I'm Coach Spivey, joined my son Jordan Spivey, and in this video tutorial, we're going to be looking at passive versus active transport. So let's get started. Before we get started with active and passive transport, let's talk a little bit about the cell membrane. And the cell membrane is a thin, flexible barrier that surrounds the cells and controls and regulates what enters and leaves the cell. The cell membrane is also known as being selectively permeable, which is just another way of just saying it determines what comes in and out of that cell. And the cell membrane is made out of a phospholipid bilayer, which is flexible and a great barrier between the inside and outside of the cell. So you look at this picture right here below, here's that lipid bilayer, and they call it a bilayer because it's got two layers. So you got that outer layer right here, and then you have that inner layer right here. And you notice you have transport proteins and other proteins embedded in this phospholipid bilayer, and they help and assist to get things across that cell membrane. And then here are our carbohydrate chains right here, which also help to provide energy. And then we notice the hydrophilic heads of the cell membrane are attracted to water and the hydrophobic tails are water fearing. So if we take a look right here, here are those hydrophilic heads and they're attracted to water, so they love water. But then here are these hydrophobic tails which are located on the inside of their phospholipid bilayer and they hate water. So hydrophilic, water loving, hydrophobic tails, water fearing. And now let's talk about passive transport, which is the movement of materials across the cell membrane without the use of energy. And materials move from an area of high concentration to an area of low concentration. And there are three types of passive transport, which are diffusion, facilitate diffusion, and osmosis. So let's go ahead and take a look at this picture right here below to help us get a better understanding. If you notice, this person right here lets a rock or a boulder go down a hill. So that rock or boulder goes from a high area to a low area. And if you notice, it doesn't require any energy for that rock or boulder to go down the hill. That's why we call it passive transport. And then if we take another look right here at passive transport, notice you have a lot of molecules on this side. So they're at an area of high concentration and then they're going to diffuse to an area of low concentration. So they're gonna go once again from high to low and that doesn't require energy. And the same thing on this picture right here as well, which is facilitate diffusion. And we'll talk about that in the next slide. And now looking at diffusion, which is the process of particles moving across the cell membrane from an area of high concentration to an area of low concentration. And the particles will move from an area where they are more concentrated to an area where they are less concentrated. So some examples in our body would be oxygen, glucose, and carbon dioxide. So we take a look at these di molecules right here. If you notice that they're highly concentrated at this point, that means they're very tight or closely packed together. But then as they diffuse, they go from an area of high concentration, and then they start to diffuse to an area of lower concentration. As, and then as we go all the way across, notice that they have equally diffused throughout this solution right here. And now let's take a look at our other example. And these molecules on the outside will represent our oxygen molecules. And this is our cell membrane right here. If you notice, we have a higher concentration of oxygen molecules on the outside and a lower concentration of oxygen molecules on the inside. So let's look at this process of diffusion as it happens. So here's that cytoplasmic membrane. Here's our oxygen molecule. Notice what happens to those oxygen molecules. They diffuse across the cell membrane until they establish equilibrium. So they go from an area of high concentration to an area of low concentration just so that they can all be in equilibrium. Facilitated diffusion is a type of diffusion that assists larger molecules in moving across the cellular membrane through the use of special protein channels. And it is diffusion because it moves the materials from an area of high concentration to low concentration. So therefore, once again, it does not require energy. An example would be protein channels assisting glucose and moving across the cell membrane. So if we take a look right here. Here's another look at facilitated diffusion. And if you notice, Here's a glucose molecule right here on the exterior or the outside part of the cell. And so here's that protein channel right here. If you notice that protein channel takes on a certain shape or specific shape to fit that glucose molecule to get it inside of the cell. So that glucose molecule continues to travel and travel until it gets inside of that cell. And so that's what would make it 
facilitate diffusion. So there's a high concentration of glucose on the outside of the cell and there's a low concentration of glucose on the inside of the cell. And this special protein allows that glucose molecule to go from a high concentration to an area of low concentration inside the cell. And now let's take a look at our next example. In our next example, you're gonna see diffusion in this animation right here at the top and then you're going to see facilitate the fusion in this animation right here we're not going to go ahead and we're not going to focus on this third one because this third one is actually talking about active transport which we will cover later in this video so let's take a look at these animations if you notice in both of these the molecules are going from an area of high concentration to an area of low concentration so that's what makes both of these passive transport but if you notice with diffusion, there is no special protein that allows it to come through. But if you look at facilitate diffusion, there's a special protein that helps facilitate or helps allow this molecule to go from area of high concentration to an area of low concentration. So it's the same for both. They're both going from high to low except facilitate diffusion use a special protein to do so. And now let's talk about our third type of passive transport, which is osmosis. And this is the diffusion of water molecules from an area of high concentration to an area of low concentration across the cell membrane. And osmosis is the same as diffusion and facilitated diffusion. It's just the diffusion of water molecules across the cell membrane. So in all three cases, the molecules or the materials are moved from an area of high concentration to low concentration. And in all three cases, this does not require energy. And the reason why this happens is because our cells want to maintain homeostasis. And homeostasis is the internal and exter external balance in our environments. And water moves back and forth across our cell membranes to help maintain this balance by moving in from an area where there's high concentration of solutes and low concentration of water to make it equal amounts of solutes and water. So now let's take a look at some examples of solutions. So we have an isotonic solution, hypotonic solution, and a hypertonic solution. If you notice, an isotonic solution is going to be normal. So you're going to have a normal red blood cell. And the reason why is because you have an equal amount of water and solutes on the inside and outside of the cell. And then if we look at a hypotonic solution, this is going to be a dilute solution. And this, is, this solution is going to cause this red blood cell to swell and the reason why is because you have a lot of solutes inside of this cell but you have very little water and so what happens is the water rushes in the cell and when it rushes in the cell it causes that cell to swell and could possibly cause that cell to burst and then last but not least we have a hypertonic solution and if you notice there's a lot of solutes on the outside of the cell it's a lot of solutes but a very little water and then what the water inside the cell is going to do in order to try to balance it out or establish homeostasis, homeostasis or equilibrium, that water is going to rush outside of this cell. And when it rushes outside of this cell, it's going to cause that cell to shrink. And then let's take a look at our next example. So if you look right here, we have 55% of water inside the cell and 55% of water outside the cell. So this is a pretty even flow of water in and out of the cell. And so this would represent an isotonic solution. So now let's take a look at our next one. We have 25% of water inside the cell and 70% of water outside the cell. Notice that there's a higher concentration of water outside the cell than inside the cell. So with this being osmosis, remember it goes from an area of high concentration to an area of low concentration. So this water is going to rush inside of this cell and it's going to cause this cell to swell. And the reason why it rushes it in is to balance out this solute right here. And when that water rushes in it causes that cell to swell and possibly burst, that's going to represent that hypotonic solution. And then let's look at our third example. Notice we have 20% of water outside the cell. Then we have 85% of water inside the cell. Notice that we have a large amount of solutes outside the cell. So this water from the inside of the cell is going to rush out to try to balance out those solutes on the outside and establish equilibrium. But when that water rushes outside of the cell, it causes that cell to shrink. And that's gonna represent our hypertonic solution.
Now let's move on to active transport. An active transport is the movement of materials against a concentration gradient. And materials move from an area of low concentration to an area of high concentration, and this does require the use of energy. There are three types of active transport. We have protein pumps, endocytosis, and exocytosis. So let's take a look at the difference between passive and active transport. Notice in passive transport, this boulder is going from an area of high concentration to low concentration. But if you notice in active transport, we're going from an area of high concentration up to an area of low concentration. So you're moving it against the concentration gradient and you have to go uphill, which requires the use of energy. So now let's take another look at an example of active transport. So if you notice, there's a low concentration right here and there's a high concentration right here. So on the outside, low concentration, inside, high concentration. And this requires the use of energy in the form of ATP to make it go from low to high concentration on both sides. So now let's take a look at those three types of active transport. The first one we was talking about was protein pumps. And they're used by cells to move calcium, potassium, and sodium ions across the cell membrane. And the reason why protein pumps are usually used is because these molecules are much larger than normal molecules. And so they require the use of energy and special protein pumps to get them across that cell membrane from an area of low concentration to high concentration. And then we look at our next type of active transport. We have endocytosis. And this is active transport where the cell brings materials in by using vesicles or making pockets around the material and taking it in. So examples would be large molecules, clumps of food, or whole cells. And so phagocytosis is a certain or special type of endocytosis where white blood cells eat damaged cells. And then we have exocytosis, and this is active transport where the cell releases material out of the cell by using a vacuole and vesicles to push materials out of the cell. So examples would be water and cell waste. So now let's take a look at some examples of endo and exocytosis. So here's the cell bringing in these materials using these vesicles or pockets. And then here's those vesicles pushing out water and cellular waste. So let's take another look at it. So those pockets are formed around those materials like large clumps of food or large molecules. And then here's that water and cell waste being pushed out. Now it's time for your final check for understanding. You're going to use your knowledge of active and passive transport to answer the following questions below. You can go ahead and pause the video now. Ladies and gentlemen, I'm Coach Spivey, sign off my son Jordan Spivey. Remember, you're wonderful, awesome, loved, and cherished. And make sure you have a wonderful, awesome, positive day. Peace.